Gumba Biotechnology Lab is a two-year-old baby established with a commitment to serve the seed industry at the molecular biotechnology level. It has been very important for the seed companies to assess the quality of seed. Gumba, who has always been concerned about the quality of the seed with respect to preservation, has now entered with a commitment to preserve the quality, to assess the quality of the seed at biotechnology level. And hence, we bring this session with a commitment to give you a clarity about FGOT, field grow out test, and MGOT, molecular grow out test for seeds. Today, we have a very special person here addressing our queries. This is going to be one of our very, very important sessions. And for that, Dr. Prashant Pyati, the principal scientist from Ajit Seeds, heading the Plant Biotechnology Research Center, is here. Welcome, Dr. Prashant Pyati. Thank you. Dr. Prashant Pyati is a PhD from the School of Biological and Biomedical Sciences, Durham University, UK. Here, he has an expertise of varied fields, especially in the molecular biotechnology pertaining to molecular cloning, plant tissue culture, plant genetic transformation, genome editing and likes. So welcome Dr. Pyati. We are very interested to know the kind of contribution you would be doing to this session today. In fact, the whole, um, the way the session has been designed for a purpose. Mm -hmm. We have been meeting the seed industry and seed companies since last two years. And we were trying to know, we were trying to promote and understand what is their requirement with respect to molecular biotechnology. Okay. And one interesting thing we found is that many companies are really, really not aware about the differences, the uh, probabilities and the advantages and the requirement between MGOT and FGOT. I know these are two very crucial tests that are conducted to find the quality of the crops. So today we invite you to educate us, to educate our viewers about the difference between FGOT and MGOT and everything that is needed for them to know. Over to you. Well, thank you Deepthiji for inviting me to Gubba Group uh, for this session. And uh, I feel you have uh, brought up this session uh, at a very critical time where we are in the middle of sort of picking up the pace to become the biotechnology aware uh, for the companies. Um, so uh, I would like to start from the beginning, like first of all, I would like to tell what GOT actually is and then maybe differentiate between what is FGOT and MGOT. So GOT basically uh, stands for a grow out testing. Uh, when a seed company manufactures the seeds, and uh, gets the seeds back from uh, its production and then they need to test it for variable parameters which is done traditionally done by the grow out testing method where in which a lot number of seeds are sown in the field and then they are observed for the phenotypic characters or morphological characters this is called a field got right. now mgot is a fairly new term a lot of people do not know what MGOT means. Uh, M, M stands for a molecular and it is a molecular GOT. So basically what we are doing here is we are getting inside the plant. Rather than looking at phenotypically, we are looking at the genes and telling the purity at the genetic level. That's what G st uh, this uh, uh, MGOT stands for. When you talk to, uh, uh, when you try to identify or uh, screen the plants from the genetic point of view. So that's the MGOT. So, uh, as I said, field GOT is mainly uh, looking at the phenotypic characters. It's it's a role for the, uh, I would say, botanists basically, because you need to look at the plants from outside. There are variable parameters. Uh, and one of the main part of field GOT is that it is done outside and it takes a longer time. Okay. And whereas molecular GOT can be done in a, fa uh, in a decent, decently quickly like uh, if you get the lots and then maybe you can finish it in seven days or max 10 days which is one of the major advantage of molecular GOT. So the, th this is the basic difference in uh, these two. Right. So now that you have um, mentioned about you know 
what is GOT, what is MGOT, and what is FGOT. Um, kindly, kindly educate us on when FGOT can be preferred, when MGOT can be preferred, and I'm assuming like all this is inter interrelated with respect to the crop that is being tested and the time that is being chosen, right? Yes, of course. Actually, you have. Uh, it's a very good question because it is really critical. Uh, one needs to decide which test to go for. Okay. okay. So basically, when uh, as I said in the beginning, if you are looking at the uh, the plants phenotypically, then you might need to wait until there are some traits for which you have to wait until there is a flowering, because a lot of traits are determined on uh, full uh, maturation of the plant. Whereas uh, the MGOT doesn't really need to wait for that. You know, you could t tell the traits. Basically, we are talking about the uh, purity of the, the this is the trait purity okay so you know your parents you have the hybrid you, are, you have the hybrid growing alongside but all you need to do is wait until like two months three months in case of like if you are going for phenotypically uh, uh, selected characters right but if you want to do the same thing at the uh, genetic level then you don't have to wait for that you just take the samples from the uh, maternal parent paternal parent and your hybrid mm -hmm. and then you can run along that and you can come to the conclusion in a less than a week time. Eight, yeah. So it depends on the crops also. And another critical thing in that is sometimes the characters are very subtle. You cannot differentiate at the phenotypic, but uh, the DNA speaks the truth. Right. So you have to, uh, that will reveal whatever is there. You know, that is the reason why the uh, DNA fingerprint or uh, DNA profiling is done in case of the uh, uh, cases when they are handled like, you know, uh, forensic cases. They, they find out the, uh, what is the pedigree and what is, who is the maternal parent, who is the paternal parent and what is the profile. From that they can conclude that. So it's, it works on the similar lines in terms of science. Sure, That's interesting. Can you explain the molecular methods that are involved in MGOT? Um, yes, uh, first of all I would, I would like uh, take a minute to explain uh, what MGOT is based on. Okay, that is very really important to understand that before we get into the technical details of that. So everybody has heard of the term DNA nowadays because the COVID has taught us a little bit of molecular biology to everyone. Sure. So everyone knows what a diagnostic test yes. is and how it is done. Yeah. Uh, so the, everybody talks of qPCR now. Specifically, exactly the PCR has exactly. become so popular. Which PCR before I didn't learn the term until ah, I went to the masters. Right. So PCR is now in everybody's mouth. Uh, so I, that's what I want. I was coming to. So everybody should know that each individual is made up of the genetic material, which is uh, in the form of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and it is ba it it contains four nucleotides basically A, T, G, C, and it's a typical double helix DNA structure. That's how the DNA is arranged. Uh, these nucleotides are arranged. So what happens in PCR is uh, it's, it's a chemical reaction. Nobody can see anything while it is happening. You can only see the bands when you run them on the right. gels and uh, other things. So from the genotype point of view, what we are doing here is we are, we are comparing the DNA profile of a male and female with their offsprings. That's what hybrid is. So at the DNA level, uh, first, if you ask about the steps involved, first of all, uh, the the seeds need to be sown and generally fresh leaves are used for DNA extraction, fresh uh, juvenile leaves because they give a good yield of DNA which is used in these reactions. There are protocols where you can even extract the DNA from the seeds itself. That again saves your four or five days but the protocol is tricky and it is totally crop dependent. So first of all you need a good quality of DNA and then uh, the DNA is used alongside of uh, some other chemical uh, components like DNTPs which adds the extra nucleotides to the reaction and a very critically an enzyme. It's called a polymerase which is a TAC polymerase actually uh, derived from a thermus aquaticus bacteria um, and primers because uh, when you come to primers it's very critical part in the molecular GOT because there are different types of primers used in the molecular right. GOT. Uh, Mainly the primers used are SSR and ISSR primers and uh, among them SSR mostly. So what happens in this reaction is the primer goes and sits, uh, binds to the template DNA and the enzyme 
amplifies the DNA. So from a one copy, you get millions of billions of copies of the DNA. So from that, uh, now these are, SSR stands for a simple sequence repeats. So they are very, uh, they are located in most of the parts of genome and they go bind at a very specific location. So on the gel, you can tell that when you run alongside a male, female and a hybrid, you will see there is one typical profile or a single band for a male parent and there is another sized band for a female parent and you can see the both bands present in the hybrid seed. That's what tells you that, okay, this, this particular hybrid is coming from these two parents. Uh, parents. That's the way of telling if it is uh, a perfect hybrid. This is the trait purity that's, that's been done. Now, there is a lot of literature available for crop wise or even varieties for varieties and hybrids for which this uh, literature can be studied and uh, the primers can be designed. So mainly it is the primer crop specific which decides the profile of the male and female parent and the turning hybrid. Okay. So these are the molecular methods? These are the molecular methods that are involved in yes. conducting an MGOT. Correct. A molecular Correct. growth test. Correct. Now can you please explain us like at what stage can this test be done? When should a seed company or when should a breeder or when any kind of uh, a seed man who is mm -hmm. a, who wants mm -hmm. to know assess the quality of the seed at which stage this test should be performed okay like you it's gone for production and the seed lots arrive in your facility and while you are doing the other seed parameters like germination physical purity moisture content and the, the, these kind of tests same time the mgot can also be uh, started um, again other thing additionally i would say that if you want to have a good control over your quality, mm -hmm. it would be a good idea to do your uh, seeds that are going for production, like your parental seeds. Before they go out for production, if you are absolutely certain what you are sending, then it becomes your, uh, then it gives you a better control over the production as well. So if I am giving it to somebody for production, and if I screen my parental lines beforehand, before I send out for the production, Right. So that you have upper hand saying that, okay, I have given you quality seeds and I want my quality seeds back. Yeah. So that that also can be done with MGOT. Okay. And the method is same. All you need to do is run a profile of your parents and from the sample, uh, you give the seeds to the uh, production. Absolutely. So uh, I, if you look at the, uh, the time point, again, uh, it is very quick, as I said before. And that too, you can achieve with a very not very huge setup it, this can be done with a small setup but of course it needs a very uh, good technical hands and a, a certain level of expertise in designing yeah, experience, experience and expertise well. matters here yes. so what you have just said is a very very you know important point mm -hmm. because this is a concern which we have been hearing from seedmen uh, that uh, uh, they, they are not able to, you know, assess the quality and after the production is done, then mm. there are certain queries about the quality of the produce. So this kind of stuff. But I also want to know, like, you know, what is the reliability level of this test of MGOT? Uh, when it comes to field GOT, a lot of things are involved, you know, the operation gets bigger because you have to deal with a bigger plot. There are a lot of people involved who will go frequently to take observations, record the observations, make their uh, uh, ratings or whatever, and then they produce, uh, they bring out the percentage of purity. So it, there are many factors involved that uh, I'll get into that a bit later. But from the molecular point of view, all these techniques are, they're, they're textbook based. You know, a lot of, there is a lot of literature mm. which tells us how precise these techniques are. Um, so. If I would be designing, let's say primers, I would be designing or I would be uh, designing primers for okra, let's say. So there is a lot of literature available. There are uh, published papers, there are many theses submitted to the universities where they have done work on many varieties, uh, many hybrids and all this information is in public domain. So one can get, get to that uh, uh, and then synthesize and then design your experiments on that. So when it comes to the uh, the uh, asserting a particular uh, hybrid or uh, telling the uh, precision in that i would say it is pretty close to 100 oh. percent so that's that's very precise uh, considering the variable factors involved in the field got and the things are better under control in 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 case of mgot MG. according to me okay 
Great, sir. That's that's really very reassuring to know. Yeah. Because uh, when we can know the quality of the seed, like you know, close to hundred percent, that precision level really really matters. Yes. And uh, that could be a base for many be- business decisions. So, what is the consistency and repeatability of this method? Um, once this standardization is done, uh, like as I said before, uh, one has to look into the literature, find out the information, design the primers. Uh, this is the part of standardization. Like you know, uh, once the technique is standardized, there is a very uh, strict procedure to follow. Right. Once the primers are designed and the reaction is set up, there is a thermocycle to be followed. So once that profile is achieved, which uh, in in case of ISSRs it can also be called as a DNA fingerprint, which is another critical part of uh, MGOT where DNA fingerprint can be prepared. And I think a lot of states are asking for DNA fingerprint for the product registration, and that can only be achieved by MGOT. So once the protocol is standardized and the primers that particular crop or that particular male parent female parent that particular hybrid uh, the primer is decided it will be consistent every time you do the reaction so that is the uh, beauty of this technique like once the method is standardized it will not change oh. it will be same so once you standardize let's say i have a, a few lots this year or i have standardized i don't have any seeds to test this year but I find I know that this lot is coming for me for testing in the season. I can standardize those now and then wait for the lots. And when the lots arrive, you just implement, implement that methods or that techniques or that methodology to the rest of the lots and you will get the same results. So for that, one need to spend some time in the beginning for standardization of uh, these methods, methods for that particular variety or a hybrid. Right. But once it is done, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, I know that you know Ajit Seeds has a very well established lab, a huge one, and uh, it's a, it is certified in many ways. And um, but when coming to the medium size and small size seed companies, um, many of them cannot afford to standardize the procedures or to run a lab. Um, how do you think? Do you think that these third party labs are reliable for their testing, for their quality assessment? Um, it depends who you are approaching in the first place mm-hmm. because you need to see uh, the profile uh, or who are the experts in that particular uh, lab and generally it happens between the uh, sort of discussion and pre-meetings between the scientists. Now uh, you are right in case of small industries they do not have any biotechnology background and they will have to entirely rely on uh, the uh, technical experts who sort of uh, will be giving you the profile and things. Um, fairly, I would say, uh, I, I do not have a lot of experience with other companies, but if I want to, uh, would like to mention what we do at Ajit Seeds is, we, we do interact with the breeders uh, at the breeders level. Okay, So we talk to the breeders and ask what they're expecting. And the breeders know the best. Uh, 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 breeders have a huge role to play in, in, in all this uh, game actually. They are the ones who know uh, the parents as well as hybrids, they know very well. So one has to have one-to-one meetings with these uh, breeders and ask them what they need. And they will tell what is, what, what is required. And on the basis of that, if the solutions come comes out of a mutual discussion, I think that's the way to uh, develop this kind of technique. And this can be done on a project mode. Like let's say, uh, select a crop and you give them a pure line. If you want to screen the parental lines, let's say, and if you want to see the line purity and things. So these can be only discussed and then dis- uh, decided between this, uh, these breeders and the biotechnologists. Yes. So, uh, yes, the technology is there, uh, only it has to be uh, sort of discussed and then decided. So, um, Dr. Pyati, um, but you know this FGOT, the field grow up test, has been existing since generation. That has been the most reliable one for the breeders, farmers and people who want to assess the seed quality. I would like to uh, tell our viewers about FGOT and MGOT and when to choose accordingly. Okay, so uh, MGOT has been running 
traditionally for so many years and yes. people have uh, re uh, relied on that and it has of course made a huge impact in the industry now uh, the best quality seeds are available in the market uh, which have come from generations and through the FGOT uh, testing itself so uh, as a biotechnologist I still have a lot of respect for uh, this methodology and the breeders of course which uh, do this part and initially I said that they have to be a very good botanist because you need to know what a uh, breadth of a leaf is or what a internodal distance is. All these parameters are very necessary and they all can be done uh, from the field GOT. My only concern about the field GOT is that uh, the amount of time required and the amount of inputs required and the number of variables because there are a lot of variables if you look at it you know the agronomic practices are there a lot of land gets busy in that and then it is weather dependent because if it's very critical time for your three or four months of whatever duty you do and if it are washed off with the rain you don't get anything out of that right. whereas in molecular duty you don't have to rely on that you know i bring the seeds in a lab germinate them and then take the fresh leaves extract the dna next day i do the pcr and the profile is done and you can do the scoring so it all happens in a week time so field GOT of course I'm not saying that it can be entirely replaced but it can be supplemented with molecular GOT and especially for the traits where it is very tricky to tell the difference between the uh, uh, plants then you can switch to the molecular GOT right. so that's what I would say right that sounds very good so um you know, uh, the breeders, farmers, there has been like, you know, uh, FGOT has been a very trusted method of assessing the quality of the seed. But I think the missing link is that, you know, people are the breeders or the farmers, the seed companies, they are not seeing the link, the balance between FGOT and MGOT. So would you like to establish something on those lines? Um, it's it's very important. Uh, uh, it's a very important question because see the the problem is uh, MGOT is a fairly new term. Okay, molecular people as and I mentioned about the COVID also. A lot of people didn't know what a molecular biology is. Yes. That's, with the uh, certain advancement uh, in the techniques now uh, during COVID, everybody talked of ELISA and qPCR and these kind of things. Uh, they know that there is something which you cannot see with the naked eye. Right. It also exists. And that is what all the organisms are made up of. Right. Okay. So it is there. Okay. Only what we are doing is using these, that's the definition of biotechnology, right? You exploit the knowledge for the betterment. So what we have done here is there are tools, there is uh, genes, all we need to do is bring them together. And then uh, how you can exploit that particular information. So this awareness is still not there among uh, many seed industries or breeders, although they study a little bit of biotechnology in their curriculum. But this is the applied part. You know, the, we are talking about real real life situation here, not a textbook situation. So this sort of awareness needs to be done among the uh, among the people like in case of uh, BT or in case of GM crops, you know, a lot of awareness needs to be brought into the people so that people get accustomed to the uh, technology and try to accept it but for that purpose one needs to stand there and tell them how safe it is like today if we talk of bt brinjal uh, in india it is not permitted but in bangladesh people are eating it from last seven years so that's that kind of awareness needs to be uh, among the farmers uh, i think that is one of the most critical thing that needs to be uh, understood how to bridge between uh, uh, mgot and fgot and as i said earlier they both are very important techniques only the thing is that using MGOT you can have more advanced uh, and more paced up results with which see the production and the market there is a very short window in especially if you talk of uh, uh, crops like cotton seed you know, supply chain seed supply chain if you talk of that there's a very sh short window you know once a sample comes in I do not have to rely on entirely on the weather or any other variables for that factor you know, when the seed lot comes, immediately I can take them for the uh, assessment. I don't have to pre wait for the land to be prepared, the observations to come in and all the variables as we discussed earlier. So that is the thing. Uh, one, one has to find a fine balance between these two and try to understand what 
upper edge the molecular GOT is giving us mm -hmm. over the field GOT. Very well answered, Mr. Pyati, Dr. Pyati. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Dr. Pyati, one common thing that we have been observing is that um, a breeder or any person who is trying to assess the quality of the seed uh, has two concerns. One thing is the price, the price factor between MGOT and FGOT mm -hmm. and also the sample size. Usually, typically in a field grow out test, uh, a typical 400 samples would be assessed. Whereas in an MGOT, a mere 9 to 6 samples would be sufficient to, to generate a DNA level result. So, how do you opine that? How do you want to throw light on this concern to our viewers? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I would strictly give my opinion in, in this regard actually. Uh, sample size, I'll take the sample size first. You said there are they do 400 uh, seeds showing in, in the field GOT whereas we take because our PCR wells are designed for a 96 well plate some people can do 384 that's a different thing but in my opinion a true representation of a sample is very important there is many scientific uh, literatures available which represents a true sample you know there are various methods of sampling there are even mathematical formulae for that based on which the samples are done so uh, form a particular lot, uh, lot, how am I picking the samples? That is important. And in my experience so far, we have been doing this for last uh, many years actually. In my opinion, the field results and the MGOT results, they have both matched. Okay. In, 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 in I would say more than 98% of this is, it wow. has matched. Not so, so it, I don't think it is, it is a case where taking a large, then why don't you take 800 samples or 600 samples for field duty? Wow, how, how have we come to the 400 number seed? That's yes. important. So, in my opinion, 96 uh, well or PCR reaction of 96 well is a true representation of what you would see in the field. Right. So, so now, what you are saying is if the sample representation is true, as per the mentioned uh, yes. categorically, yes. then yes. the result what you get is absolutely specific absolutely. and accurate. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Now the next part is uh, when you say expenses, yes I would say the molecular techniques are expensive because they are highly specific reactions. Let's say these enzymes uh, like I mentioned in the beginning TAC polymerase and when you buy the other components of the reaction like DNTPs and other things, we're just talking of uh, PCR here okay there are other methods like AFLP, RFLP then there are restriction enzymes involved and other part of that is you need to have expert hands right. it's not a layman's work you know right. you, when you are handing in such expensive chemicals to someone you want that person to be qualified so you have so this is where I'm going with the costings you know I as I said biotechnology yes it, it is expensive I, I don't say it's not but then lastly when we, it comes to precision, uh, how much risk one is ready to take, you know, rather the believing in field, field GOT data and, and uh, uh, escaping the MGOT only because it is expensive. Right. So that's the point. Uh, if you want to be absolutely certain, this comes very critical in terms of parental lines. Let me uh, give you an example. Uh, and I think I mentioned this before. If you want to be absolutely certain about your parental line, because you can't, Everybody looks at a seed and they can't tell what is inside. You can't even tell germination uh, percentage, vigor or anything on that. You have to get inside the seed. Right. And here we are getting not only inside the seed, we are going to the cellular level. We are going to the nuclear level. That is where uh, you can tell if the trait is uh, there or not or what you are expecting. So if I want to be absolutely certain, I go for parental line purity and then I give these seeds for production, I am almost more or less certain that I'm getting good good quality seeds back. So for these purposes, mol molecular GOT has certain advantages which uh, you cannot ignore. Right. Only on the basis of uh, the costing. Costing. That's what I believe in. Great. Got that. That's very practical. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. So, Dr. Pyati, this session has been very knowledgeable and uh, okay. I am I'm assuming that we have covered a large field, a large area with respect to the concerns of seed industry related to FGOT and MGOT. I must say FGOT or MGOT. So you have thrown light on many aspects, many practical, technical 
and monetary aspects related mm-hmm. to these two issues I really appreciate i truly appreciate your efforts your contribution on behalf of the seed industry thank, thank you. you so much for your efforts for uh, coming here today and uh, sharing this knowledge thank you thank you and um, for everyone watching this video in case if you have any questions any queries related to mgot fgot please write to us through the below mentioned emails dr pyati is here ready to address your queries thank you